with Art Morrison the third here. Kate McCready here. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Dollar. This is episode seven. Seven. Episode seven. Yeah. Seven. And we're gonna get back to our question answering. This one's gonna be fun. They're always fun. Every yeah. episode's fun. <laughs> That's so optimistic. Yeah. Of you. All things are fun. Yeah. So this one though is cool because we're merging tech and real estate, which is gonna be huge moving forward. Yeah. Technology has already shaken up the real estate game in the last 10 years, birthing literally thousands of investors, thousands of new real, uh, realtors, making real estate so much easier for the consumer, meaning not the agents, not the people who work in the business, but actual buyers and sellers. Yeah. So the question for today's episode is, which real estate app is the best? Oh. Which real estate app is better? I already know my answer, so we can dive it's into why. Probably the same answer. What's your answer? PropStream. PropStream. You like PropStream. You yeah. like PropStream more than like Zillow? Truly? I hate Zillow. You hate as Zillow? An, I mean, no. Tell me why you hate Zillow. Because as an agent, there's, I mean, as anything, like in acquisitions, as an agent, as an investor, whatever, Zillow has these Zestimates that they throw up there and like, it's just this algorithm that That's they have. That's really good marketing, by the way. Zestimate, Zillow, yeah, Zestimate. Yeah, it's amazing. Every, yeah. Everyone knows what a Zestimate is. Like yeah. you can say it like to the to somebody who doesn't Isn't know. Isn't it crazy to think Zillow wasn't around 10 years ago? Like think about that. We shouldn't be doing free marketing for them like this, but. I mean, we're not, we're gonna get to our answer, but continue to tell me why they're so bad. That was a joke. Um, yeah, because people will go on and you can, even if your Hold house on. is. Time for an ad. This episode was brought to you by Zill. I'm just kidding. You're so <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I need some water first. Yeah, we're gonna sit here in silence so we listen to you drink water. All right, well, if you didn't come No, go ahead, time. Zillow, go. You hate it. And no, I mean, it's a, it's a decent tool and it's fine for like consumers, but like I just personally don't like Zillow because they have these estimates they throw up there. It's an algorithm and like essentially it's comparables, like a comparable number that they throw up there for any house that's out there for the most part. So if your house is not on the market, hasn't been on the market for 20 years, um, they have no idea what the condition is if you've added a bathroom or added a bedroom or added a whole addition onto it, but they're gonna have that Zestimate up there stating like what it is and then they have like this Zestimate range which can be anywhere like it, can be it a $60, differs. Dollar range, yeah. It diff I've seen like six figure difference. Yeah. Like in the in the. So how does that affect you in, in your job? Because I talk to sellers all the time, or mm -hmm. people who want to sell, or even like even buyers like in a market when they look at a estimate if it's higher than what it really should be, a seller thinks like, oh, they're sending it to me. They're like, oh, this is you know I can get this much and I'm. Really yeah. saying like, hey, listen, your house is like super outdated. You can't get that much. I know what it says, but that's not what the deal is. Yeah. And Zillow factors in like properties that aren't technically comparables. Yeah. So on that end, that's annoying. And then even for for buyers, if they see a property and the estimate is lower than what you know, I would advise them to offer, especially in like a market like we just had. Yeah. It's it puts me in a place where it's like, okay. Yeah, you, you have to work you know. harder to show your expertise as yeah. an agent. So you have to pull the data your own way, be able to show them actual research that you've done and yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, it definitely stinks. That's Mr. Funny though, cause it's like, you know me, I'm like sometimes Mr. Optimistic. So like, there's a double-edged sword. Yeah. If like for me, I like to use the estimate to my advantage. I'm like, yo, the estimate sucks when we're trying to buy properties from sellers or list a property on behalf of sellers or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this estimate could definitely be really helpful when A, the number is in your favor, meaning it's oh, lower yeah. than you know it really is. Or B, to say, hey, you know, this is the, like, this is this estimate, so this is why my offer is, like, amazing, right? You, yeah. Like, because it has that credibility, you can leverage it. We did, yeah, we used that in the same deal in Steve's deal when we bought his four properties. Yeah, yeah, his estimates were low, and he's like, well, I can supposedly get this one. So I'm like, yeah. all right, we'll give you that much. You got it, because well, he didn't yeah. even realize that. So we'll give you that much minus commission. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but we both said prop stream is what we do like. Yeah. So let's get to the positive Did you say prop stream? I said prop stream. Well, prop stream was my thought. I thought it first. Remember, I said I'm thinking, and you said we're probably thinking the same thing. We can run it back if you need to. I already know my answer, so we can dive it's into why. probably the same answer. What's your answer? PropStream. Anyway. Oh, we absolutely can. That doesn't mean you 
It was first. I thought at first because I had the question. I, you didn't even know the question. You see how she does, yeah, y'all? Yeah, but I would have been. I would have <laughs> known no, my answer already. Would've. I knew the question, so I had to answer first because I had the question. So you could say that I'm cheating. You could argue that I'm cheating, but you can't argue that you had it before. I just know that people are going to understand me way more than you in this situation. Yeah, certain type of people. Whatever. So look, prop stream. If you don't know what prop stream is, it's a really cool app. We'll explain in a little bit, but after we're done explaining, if you want to leverage this app or research it, go to roadmapdealfinder.com. The real estate roadmap is our online uh, mastermind group with over 300 students. And um, basically we have a deal with PropStream where you can get you a seven day free trial as well as a low discount. So with that being said, roadmapdealfinder.com to research more about this app that we're gonna talk about. But look, PropStream. So why, why is PropStream your favorite? Well, first let's talk about what is PropStream. How would you describe PropStream to the people? It's just a massive national database of properties and like data. all their data information. Yeah. information on the homes but also like who owns the homes who yeah. owned the home in the Mar past market data who bought what when who sold what yeah. when uh how did they acquire it there's even mortgage data up there any data that's public yeah. um they've done a really good job of accumulating over the last i think they've been around what did albert say seven years no, i might have been more than that 12 years burton burton what's it albert he said albert what's his last name alberto no, so it's, Burton it's like at Burton Owl Siendo or something. If you're watching this, I forgot your name. Sorry, Burton. Uh, anywho, that's why Kate is the, see, she remembers names. She does Kate all the- Kate is the one. <laughs> you're the scheduler of all the people. Yeah, yeah. Burton on here anyway. Uh, but like I was saying though, any data that's public, it has done a great job of accumulating so that you can simply look up a zip code and learn everything there is to know about that zip code, mm -hmm. a township or municipality. Um, or city, right? A property, a homeowner. You can search any of these things and get a ton of information. But it has an additional tool, a skip tracing tool. If you don't know what skip tracing is, it's just taking one data point or one or two data points rather and using it to find more data points. So if I have your name and address, then I can use it to find your email, phone number, etc. And then I can uh, market to you or try to build a relationship with you. It's like algebra. Right. Y it's solve for X. MX plus B. Yeah, yeah, Y equals MX plus B solve for X. Yeah. Is that no, nah, what's uh that's not Einstein's Anyway, it's not the point. No, I'm saying who's whose formula was that? I have no idea. Nah, Einstein was like E equals M C squared. Is he Y equals MX plus B too? Probably. Whatever. Shout out to Einstein too. Kidding. Um, but anyway, right, so you can take this data and you can work magic with it as an investor, where back in the day you would have had to knock on doors. You would have had to call the phone book. These are real things that you would do. And again, that's not like the worst job in the world, knocking on doors and phone booking, especially during a time where people were way more accepting of knocking on doors and phone booking. If you, when you cold call if people you today- dare knock on my door. People do though. Like, yo, yeah. people knock on your door to talk about their religion, their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> they knock on your door to try to get you to vote for who they want you to vote for. More free ads. Yeah, like, yo, people people door knock these days. Realtors still door knock. This saves you that time and allows you to not only do real estate at scale, but also be able to do it remotely, virtually, yeah. which is really cool. It has turned real estate into a data game more so than a physical hustle and bustle, trade your time for money game. Right. And that's the type of game I like game. to play. Yeah. You said what? Just a capital game, like a money game. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's literally like Monopoly. Yeah. Because Monopoly. I, I would say like now it even allows you to hustle more so than the person who can just yeah, like buy I mean, whatever. With that data, yeah. even if you went and door knock, like you can you, you can move different with that yeah. data. So I really do enjoy that application. Um, yeah, I would go as far to say is like, if you even slightly aspire to be in real estate, you need to get prop stream. Yeah, like or else people, you're behind. Like we you're, coach you're 300 lose, people yeah. and it's weird that like, you know, 30% of those people listen and go get that app. Like I'm trying to tell you like, yo, this app is solely responsible for much of our success. You can send direct marketing from the app. Like, yeah, you, you can, can market directly from the app, postcards, et cetera. Really powerful app, not to make this like a marketing thing for the app, but I, I love that app. No, I mean, it's, 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 you need to have prop stream if you want to be in real estate at all. Even as an agent, I think it's just extremely helpful. Yeah, people sleep on that too as an agent. Yeah. Man, if I was an agent, I will crush all your agents. Because it gives you MLS and public record data. Yeah. Yeah. Huge app. So if anybody was looking for some sort of tool to grow their investor business yeah. or you're getting started, you didn't know where to start, it's a great place to start. Yeah. Another great place to start 
is uh, www.unitedhomerelief.com. We have opportunities, you like that <laughs> plug, right? I'm good at this. Yeah. We have opportunities where you can partner with us on deals or learn from us. Join that mastermind group I talked about and literally get in contact with representatives from PropStream that come in on our calls and talk about how you can best use it as an investor. Now there's plenty of other apps. This episode was about what app we like most. It wasn't a, like PropStream didn't pay us for that or this episode they need to start though. they need to start right um but what i'm saying is that do your own research there are other apps there's literally apps that help you be an investor mm -hmm. don't be someone who sits around and sees other people being successful or saying i want to be a real estate investor and you listen to podcasts and all that but then you don't take action we just gave you a definitive action you can take to grow a successful real estate business so you need to go ahead along with that action make sure you like share subscribe to our podcast, The Daily Dollar on Apple Music, or no, Apple Podcasts, excuse me, Spotify. I'm about to drop an album on Apple Music though. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm about to start bringing these real estate raps to the game. Give us a little freestyle right now. A little, um, you know, proud stream, you know, download, <laughs> subscribe, like, share. Yeah, that'll go far. Seriously though, Instagram at United Home Relief, website, www.unitedhomerelief.com. Like, share, subscribe to this podcast, The Daily Dollar. Start filling your, your brain up with real estate information. Um, what else? See you on the next episode. What episode is this, seven? Yeah. Who are you? I'm Kate McCready. Where can they find you? At, hi, Kate McCready. Hi, like H-I-G-H? -H? No. H I Kate C A I T McCready M C C. We'll put it on the screen. Ready. We'll put it yeah. on the screen. At Art Morrison the Third, shoot me a follow. We love giving out free game. We'll catch you guys on episode eight. Yeah, yeah episode eight. This was episode seven. I'm Art Morrison the Third. This is Kate McCready, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Peace.